as much as I rediscover old parts of who I was, I'm not that person anymore. A year and I still think that intro is the cutest thing ever. Let's talk about that intro for a second because as I've been sharing recently on my channel I'm very big on the manifesting front and in my first episode of Project Reset I talked about how important it is for me to write out my goals, my to-do lists all the time and been doing that all year to help me move on from giving birth to a baby and uh, pandemic life. It's worked out pretty well and I feel like I've manifested the intro to the video. Before I go on, can we just acknowledge the fact I've actually had my eyebrows done, HD brows. I have a nice fresh manicure. I've been actually making time to do these nice things for myself. I'll ask for help. I'll say, dear husband, do you mind if I go for an hour to do this lovely thing for myself? And he'll say, of course. Sometimes it really is that easy. I felt so guilty about doing that last year. <laughs> just like, making time for me. I haven't, I haven't plucked my eyebrows or tinted them in a millennium or, or dyed my hair of all the greys coming through. I look so tired because I am so tired. As stupid as a nice neat new manicure is, uh, as insignificant as that is, it makes me feel more put together and just better about myself and then I, I genuinely feel like I act different in my life. But yeah, the little intro for these videos, um, you know the bit where it's like, it's me and I'm doing my little, the little uh, kind of yoga move with the little cartoon image of my son on my back. Um, so that was just, you know, it put in there by the wonderful artist, I'll link her in the description box, Ruby, but um, that was just added in to represent the fact that I wanted to get my fitness back and become stronger and um, you know, make time for looking after myself in that way. And uh, so I started doing workouts recently. In the last episode of this, I think I was talking about how my fitness had just gone to shit. You know, I had no time to go to the gym because like that is, that's a two hour chunk out of the day, multiple days a week. And just on top of everything else, I just, I couldn't really fit that in. It just wasn't working out. And all I was doing for many months was walking. I am now 22 workouts now, I believe. Into an actual workout program. Invested in an Apple Watch. This is my Apple Watch. It's gorgeous. I went for this one It's like got the rose gold face and the strap is like burgundy and green This links up with an app that I'm using called Copilot. I'm gonna do a sponsorship with Copilot so in a video I will show fully how it works and I'll explain it in depth but um, you know did a workout today and the personal trainer I've been paired up with Essentially, you know, I had a video call with her and I talked through everything, you know, what I wanted to achieve, where my fitness was at when I started and she started me off really, really slowly just doing home workouts. You know, it, we started off with body weight and now I've started adding in, you know, dumbbells, a yoga ball and stuff. And what's just mad is that like one of the go-to like moves she she has for me, that she always makes me do is, is that one from the intro and I did not ask her for that she just like had it in my plan and in the app it kind of gives you like a video instruction of how to do it and every time I'm doing it I always think of this series and of all of you and I'm just there like doing my little move and I felt my balance improving so much over the past like few weeks I'm so much fitter in such a short space of time and you know it's it's three workouts a week I think they're about 30, 40 minutes total, including a warm up and a stretching session. And I usually do them in the evening when my son's asleep. They're so handy and I always feel this burst of energy after they do them. And yeah, it's just, it's been brilliant, like to find something that fits into my day in that way. And just, oh, just like, just 
doing it. It's just like you make the choice, you set aside time to do it, you do the thing. Having workout on my to-do list three times a week and taking it off just gives, gives me so much satisfaction. And um, yeah, so I just found that like really funny that the exact scene minus the baby on my back has come to be many's the time for me. So another shot from that intro, uh, taking the time to do the skincare and I, I have been, you know, on and off with my skincare this year, I'll be honest, but I've just had to adapt my skincare routine and just accept that I don't have time to do a billion jillion steps. I used to do so many steps in my skincare routine back pre-baby um, and I, I don't really have time for that now, but I've tested a lot of products this year, loads of gifted skincare thank you so much to any company who sent me something to to try um didn't love it all liked some of it but these are the stars of the show so i feel like these skincare products are my favorites of 2021 someone asked me this on instagram the other day um if i have had any filler or botox i've never had filler or botox and they were telling me that my face doesn't like make move when i make expressions like it definitely does like i it bunches up and I do get lines in my face, they've just not stuck. And I, I, all I have to thank is my skincare routine and the fact that I eat a lot of really healthy things as well. The standout skin cleanser to me out of everything that I tried this year has been the CeraVe Hydrating Cream to Foam Cleanser. Cleanses, hydrates and removes makeup without disrupting the protective skin barrier. It has ceramides, amino acids and hyaluronic acid and I love this. I've recommended it to a lot of my friends. The first time I ever tried this, it was gifted. And since I have been gifted a couple of other bottles, but this is one that I bought myself because I also use it on my son in the bath a lot. It's It's got no fragrance, you know, it's, it's lovely, lovely. Yeah, I'd usually use that in the morning and as my second cleanse at night time. I don't always use vitamin C because you know it is a bit sticky and yeah I, I know I know I still need to use the actives though. Drunk elephant vitamin C I use like once twice a week. I kind of mix up these ones so like serums and like things that I put on under the moisturizer I'll usually pick one. Love this so much it's the Emma Hardy Midas Touch serum clinically proven to increase skin hydration in only four weeks and yeah at the start of this series like i just felt dry as a husk i think back then i just wish someone had handed me this and said you know just, just try try this it's it's very 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 good i do think that has um helped to hydrate my skin a lot i also love this stuff very much it's the hyalo b5 aqua gel spf 30 it's like giving your face a drink um i also like the hyalo Hello B5 serum, pure hyaluronic acid, and um, they're both La Roche Posay. I was gifted both of these. However, I've also repurchased both of these. That one was gifted too. This one was also gifted, though I am almost out and I'm going to repurchase it. It's the Lancome Advanced Genifique Youth Activating Concentrate. I I use this one when I want to be fancy, like when I want to be like. Mm, my lotions oh, that's when I whip this one out when I want a deep cleaning face mask and um, I bought this one it's sea magic black clay SOS and it has dead sea mud kaolin and activated charcoal I don't really know how much this does but my face feels very clean after I use it and it's just kind of more of a like you know when you when you just want one of those nights in where you're like I'm pampering myself today that's what I use this for a little shout out to the ordinary glycolic acid uh, toner. I don't use it as often as I should, but uh, I do use it sometimes. These are my favorite moisturizers of the whole year. Um, the Kiehl's Multi-Corrective Cream. I showed this in a recent episode of this, but it has an SPF and it's just lovely. It makes my skin very glowy after I use it. And um, the La Roche-Posay Tolerane Cream. <laughs> um, unreal i've got my husband quite hooked on this stuff as well uh, we had another bottle that fell down the toilet i believe that one was gifted and then um got this one i've been very good about my spf this year i have to say i just i think i deserve a few pats on the back for my spf usage this year um antelios la roche posay unreal apparently this visibly reduces wrinkles and dark spots so it's up to you whether or not you believe that it does that but that's what it says it does and spending a bit of time on skincare just makes me feel like I have a bit more control in my life than I do. Um, 
I know that's such a meme, you know, it, it, it is literally a meme, but it's it's true. Um, these little things do bring a lot of joy if you let them. Yeah, I've been channeling the cartoon version of myself in the intro, just, you know, doing her little face, her face routines. Anyway, um, in the morning, we are going to County Wicklow to see our wedding venue again. Another thing in the intro is like a little wedding cake because this year, like part of this year, I just, I wanted to get back to feeling like myself again ahead of our actual like wedding wedding, not our little registry office COVID marriage. Um, but you know, our, our big day, which we had to reschedule and it's now so soon two years later we're actually like you know going ahead with it and uh yeah i'm probably not gonna vlog there but i might make like a little reel if, if you're watching this there's probably already a reel on instagram just like little snippets of the venue but um i'm gonna make a deadly vlog of the it's like a four day wedding <laughs> in ballybeg house in wicklow um on their website i think they've like a walk through of a lot of the venue but I hear that they've added like more accommodation for guests they can accommodate up to 50 guests I think now um which is so cool like family and friends and stuff and um yeah so I'll um I'll film a little bit on on the drive if you want to come with us cut to that we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas some little treats from the rock bakery so your one is a terry's chocolate orange pastry <laughs> this one is mine it's a christmas pudding flavor la, 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 la. We've already had to stop on our drive from Dublin to Wicklow for a breastfeed. It's so hard traveling anywhere with a toddler, like especially if you're breastfeeding, because it's not just like a drink, it's like a way he checks in with me as well. So we're on our way out to see the wedding venue for the first time in two years. They've added loads of stuff, so they invited us out to have a little look. Yeah, it's kind of to help get the planning waters moving again and um, just to get the excitement back again as well yeah. because we haven't seen the place in ages. It doesn't feel like it's in three months. It's in three months <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I want to be really, really excited about it. Yeah, well like nearly everything is done. Um, we basically, we had a call with the wedding planner and we just said we want to do the if same I... thing again. Yeah, same flowers, same, you know, we're using the same music, just everything as we originally planned except i might be getting a red dress to change into for the evening time for the dancing part yeah, um, be like about but time. but we have a toddler who goes to bed at like six o'clock and i don't know how it's gonna work you know he's still on the boob obviously and i'll have to like go off and get him to sleep and then we'll probably have to take turns sitting in with him but yeah it'll be fine though yeah. we'll make it work i'm gonna want to go to bed at like 10 though because i don't drink Anyway, I can't imagine I really want to hang out for long. Um, nom, 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 nom. Oh, nom, nom. oh yeah, on the house front, contracts are signed. Yes. We sign the contracts. Yes. They sign the contracts. So we get our keys when is it? It's in January, fourteenth. Fourteenth of January we get the keys. So now we have we have some kind of legal standing. They can't just yeah. drop out for nothing. They can still drop out but they have to have a reason. Yeah. Um, so that's all looking very good. And oh, I just can't wait. You know, I just feel like filming will be easier. Because, you know, yeah. in Thomas's family home, I, I just want to respect everyone's privacy. So I don't, I can't just really whip my camera out whenever I fancy vlogging. And I do feel very limited. The house we bought is a bungalow. 1970s bungalow it will need some level of updating it's quite old-fashioned but i absolutely love it and i i could picture us staying there forever so i don't have that feeling of oh this is just a temporary house you know um, uh, 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 that's a car having a toddler is mad he's trying so hard to talk now and all day is just uh, uh, mm, 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 uh. We're just trying to teach him what everything means. It's so funny. He's so cute. It's definitely more fun at this stage. Like the other day you were like, oh, I, it, 
if only he just could stay this age forever because he's just at such a cute age. I have a very jet lagged husband here. Um, since that last clip, Thomas has done his first trip to New York. <laughs> Thomas is flying long haul now and um, he's so, so tired. So, so sleepy. <laughs> so, so sleepy. <laughs> Um, so I am getting a taster of what mum life is like without the husband always on hand. Um, it's actually not, okay. yeah, it's not so bad. Um, I just wasn't really able to do any work, but sure. <laughs> um, when we move house, we're going to have um, childcare for like one or two days a week. Probably yeah. grandparents, because I'm going to have an office and... Um, yeah, on this channel, like, it'll be a combination of, like, still vloggy style stuff, um, lots of, you know, home projects and all that kind of thing. A pilot life vlog thing. <laughs> I get to be a vlogger while I'm away. Yeah, we were thinking of doing, like, a series. <laughs> we were trying to think, like, what would be a fun way for us to document this whole phase of our lives. Our relationship started as a long distance relationship and you know we were so new at that time and I wasn't like documenting that really yeah. um, and I've a little bit of it documented from the monthly vlogs but yeah it, it might be a case where I'm vlogging and then Thomas is vlogging over in New York and we're like you know cutting the clips in and out. It, it, I think it'd be funny watching like what you're doing while what look like I'm there who it would be interesting, and you're there yeah. like doing something real fun and touristy or something like that yeah also when I have an office I would love to start doing video essays that's been something I've wanted to do for a long time because I watch a lot of that kind of content you know like those kinds of videos where there's a topic and you spend a long time you know putting together the idea um you know full proper script and it's really thought out and highly edited and uh just higher value content, uh, I suppose. Yeah, I'm just really excited. It's gonna be so weird though, not like being here anymore. Like, I know we don't actually live here. This is like the house I rent with my dad and, but this is where my wedding dress is. I did show this before. Yeah, I did. I wore this in a video. I tried it on in a video a few months ago. <laughs> I'd say it might fit a bit better now, but um, she's still there packaged away ever since COVID first came to ruin all of our lives. I can't make many changes to that dress because of the type of bodice that it has, so... We're gonna have to find a new person as well, because the person we got that dress off is like... Retired! He, he's 100% retired now, like that was two years ago. Yeah, we were, like, he was really of, old. We were pulling them out of retirement to finish that dress, <laughs> trying to get him get to his house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what is that you have there, my love? Oh, I just so happen to be holding your entire book collection. <laughs> oh, cool, thanks. All my covers. <laughs> In case you are wondering, our baby's down, or our, our toddler, he's down with my dad. Little book update. So, another thing from the intro, uh, you may or may not have spotted is the title of my novel is like on one of the little books when the camera's like panning. Um, because, as you know, in this whole series of project reset i intended to get my second novel glass houses finished and i did and it's going through all the different phases of editing and stuff right now and it's coming out next year and i'm shitting myself and wanted to just show you my book covers real quick again as a little memory refresher to uh announce that i have indeed seen my next book cover and what did you think you liked it I really you liked immediately it. really liked it. Yeah. I, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, because <gasps> the book is like, it is quite heavy. A lot of the book is quite heavy, but and the cover yeah. is very, you know, but <laughs> it's gorgeous. I just didn't know if it like communicated the right message oh, or whatever, yeah. but or the right tone. But it is um, a class. It's probably my nicest book ever. So all those you just saw, I think the next book cover is like nicer yeah like the process of writing that book was just so mad like I was half asleep throughout most of it because I had a newborn and I was pregnant and then the pandemic and you know there was just so much going on in the world that I felt like it was influencing everything I wrote most of it on the spare bed in the attic in Thomas's parents house just like just kind of just coffee and fuck. I often get asked by people about like to talk more about you know where do you get your ideas and and how how do you write a book and stuff um i do want to make an entire video about that but are you just being a bit creep in the background i do i do want to make a video about that topic but um i wanted to bring this up here because 
just the weirdest thing happened yesterday and it was it was kind of like really uncomfortable and and at the same time really important so i shared a scene from glass houses on my instagram story and all the feedback was so 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 nice and i'm so glad that so many of you are excited and thank you very much if you've pre-ordered the book however so somebody who saw the scene it's like an exchange between two characters the reason i picked that scene was just because i felt like it communicated like some of what the book is about without sharing any spoilers to do with the actual plot you know so somebody who read that it reminded them of a youtube video by another content creator from years and years ago about the same subject so um this content creator lost a loved one to suicide and they messaged this content creator about my scene and said you know this looks like very similar to certain things that you said in this video and then the content creator reached out to me and we had a really lovely honest adult exchange she's also a writer so she was like extremely understanding essentially i had you know watched her video at the time i was dealing with a lot of like worries about a loved one a loved one who also makes content online and who has spoken very openly about the depth of her mental health struggles a lot of you will be aware of that. I don't really want to go in too much into it. That's why I ended up watching that video and certain things that the creator had said in the video. Um, just about, you know, that like kind of what she'd say to, to someone who was feeling suicidal. It was so powerful, the things she said. You know, I remember watching it and crying and getting goosebumps and I was just like really, really impacted by that video. And um, it, it obviously- just stuck with you. Yeah, when I was writing that scene, I think that scene manifested from me watching that video, you know? The issue is though that like, while it was written differently, it was very much like heavily inspired by her words. And there were certain sentences that like she essentially said very similar things in her video. Whatever person read my scene and like thought of these words that this YouTuber spoke a very long time ago, like that's obviously how how strong what she said what, like to, to stay in someone's brain that long that they remembered that video you know one of you essentially saw my scene and thought that i was like intentionally lifting it from someone else and i just really wanted to talk about where ideas and where where books and fiction and everything where it all comes from because I know that like everything I've ever written has been, and I know every other writer I talk to is the same. Book ideas come from everything you ever see, think, uh, hear, experience, like all of the art you ever consume, all of the, the thoughts and opinions you ever read in like articles, videos, all the conversations you ever have, like there are always lines in my books even from like you know literally direct like someone will say something and i'll be like that's going in the book like you know remember what was it christopher said if like if you're giving a dog a treat you cut it in two and then they get twice the enjoyment out of it yeah and i remember hearing that and i was just like you know that's so funny and um when certain was, scenes were like from when i was reading if only it was my like friendships like every second page i remembered like experiences like that we had had or things that you told me that had happened between you and other people or mm. things like that like i was reading it and just be like oh that's the day we went to this thing that's where that's come from and then the a few pages later be like oh i remember that day because melanie was telling me that this happened with xyz like a novel is a patchwork of a billion different things like i said you know with this it was very much inspired by the movie about time tons of other things going on in my life and stuff and glass houses that's coming out i wanted it to be like the secret garden for adults and then there's like a kind of love triangle situation and also you know group therapy stuff but yeah at the same time there's a difference between inspiration and basically plagiarism do you know what i mean and and uh, plagiarism you know verbatim plagiarism and then um there's like structural plagiarism but you know if you if you like lift someone's exact lines and put them into your your book then you know you, that's really really bad don't do that um i think what happened with this specific scene though is like i wasn't going anywhere at all because we were in lockdown i wasn't having conversations everything that was kind of running through my brain was coming from 
podcasts and YouTube videos that I'd seen, just points about, you know, when you've lost someone that you will feel like jealous of other people who haven't lost that, you know, say if it's their girlfriend, their their sibling, their parent, you know, um, just certain things that she expressed in that video. They had stuck in my brain so much that I was then trying to like, you know, weave those thoughts into that inter interaction in, in the book. But yeah, so she and I talked and I have made some edits to it, but she said, like she said, she was, she was happy for her work to be a source of inspiration. But yeah, like she was happy that I was, you know, just, just making it less, less linked to her. Cause I suppose it's not nice for her to have that event brought up. It's such a sensitive subject and stuff. But yeah, anyway, last night, like when I, when we were first started talking, I just got so, I don't know, like upset. I don't know, like I got really wrapped up in my own head about like, you know, just, just ideas. Like for example, I was speaking to a loved one who has experienced suicidal ideation and we were having a conversation and I, I asked them, you know, what would be something that would hold you back from committing suicide if you really, really wanted to? Um, or has there been anything for you? And it's just really important if you're writing from the perspective of someone going through something that you've not gone through, that you listen to people who've been there. And um, she said, you know, if, if your pet was relying on you, as an example. And so, yeah, like with her help, I developed the character of Bertie the cat, who has no tail and he's really old and he's he's about to die himself, but the owner is like waiting for her beloved cat to die before she would even consider um what she's what she's planning but i was saying this to you that is also basically part of the series that ricky gervais brought out and like i didn't i didn't really get into it i love ricky gervais but like it was his last one was it um afterlife was that a? afterlife yeah we only we, ever we, watched like one episode yeah it may be because it wasn't as funny as his other stuff like it was a bit more serious and at the time it was like during covid and i was like i can't watch anything too heavy right now he he like needs to feed his dog as far as i remember nothing appears out of a vacuum like there's yeah. nothing there is no such thing as pure inspiration because even if you were to write about yeah. balls of energy on another planet the only stories that you'd be able to put together that comprehend have some kind of are pulled from some experience either you've had or you've seen on telly or you've read yeah. about but the the issue with this was like that wasn't an experience i had i think i thought i in my exhaustion with the baby i probably just didn't place it you know and but that's what writing is it's it's you you pull from your personal experiences as well as the experiences of 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 those around you or that you, you've read about or that you've seen um, and it's about putting all of those experiences together, together into to something, something new to make something new there's a word for it's, that what is it it's, it's, begins with an s i don't know where i get ideas but evidently uh they come from every literally everything like that was like such an old video that i randomly viewed one day when i was looking for other people who were in the same headspace as I was um, and that wasn't long before I started the book I don't think but like I, I was listening to a, a blind boy podcast where he was talking about writing and he was saying he doesn't view things like like if he if he goes a couple of days without doing any work where he's just like playing games or watching movies or reading and stuff like that he doesn't view that as like wasted time because oh, yeah, he yeah. views that as I'm consuming these experiences and they're going into my subconscious and when I'm writing next or maybe it'll be in a few months time or a few years time mm. that these experiences that I'm having right now with whatever it is a book or a show or a game will manifest in my subconscious and they'll come back out and they will create something productive in the future and um, so I think that's like a very good way to look at um like where inspiration can come from and mm. and not to be hard on yourself if you're if you're procrastinating yeah uh, because you're technically not but um it, it's it's it there you, there is a line with writing like you, you have to toe the line between you know 
being inspired by a million different things that you've experienced over and, the past 10 years yeah of, and just being like doing oh, do, doing it what's of 50 I'm shades of gray just taking twilight and just completely <laughs> redoing it. like just that scene for scene yeah. you know it's it's absolutely mad that's well i suppose that started as fan fiction fan fiction is allowed um i'm pretty sure i wrote something in this book about how like when i started writing i did i used to just be like I'd write my own version of Harry Potter or my own version of Goosebumps or like. Mm. But wasn't it, what what's that author that does the lectures and he talks about? Oh, Brandon lectures. Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson, him. yeah, like he had a very good point. Like getting into writing, he was like, when you're starting writing, like to as a stepping stone, just like pick a story that you really like. So like pick say Star Wars, but it's not in the future it's a western mm. and then you're like right i'm just gonna write star wars the western and see how it comes out and and yeah, yeah. write stories and like that technically you know if you stick too hard to the star wars thing is basically plagiarism but it's it's it you the, the job of a writer starting out you don't really care. i think it's plagiarism if you, if you if you put in like you know and then he revealed that he was his father, and then he was like, <laughs> no! Anyway, I just thought this would be an interesting thing to talk about, and uh, I really wanted to include it in case that person who messaged the content creator is watching. Um, I'm sure there was more than one person if someone felt that strongly that they... Because I don't think I got any... I didn't see any messages or comments about it, so... Um, it just kind of... Yeah, she reached out to me, though, thank goodness and it did it just did it sparked a, a long conversation between us two about just like where inspiration comes from and and yeah. what writing as a profession actually is because i just got really i suppose i got really like i don't know paranoid about um the book and like has that come from me if you know i i saw this video and it really stuck with me and then i wrote a scene and somehow things that person said worked their way into the scene i don't know i just wish maybe if i wasn't as tired i would have remembered where that was coming from and i would have gone back to like make sure that it wasn't so similar mm. i don't know but yeah can't wait to show you my new book cover it's orange <laughs> it's gonna look nice next to this on a shelf so they went with this sort of design rather than the original so the original was like this but I had issues with this because online you just can't really see the text, you know, because if you're looking at something online, you know, scrolling Amazon, it's really far away. And I just feel like, yeah, the title has to be very clear. Uh, clear. Um, that's another thing we have managed to get done this year. I, I, from everything I've ever thought and seen and experienced and enjoyed and cried about and just all of the things and I went <laughs> onto my onto my computer. Is that what you did? Yeah. Did I help? Yeah. How you actually really did help. How much did I help? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Thomas came up with like so many of the plot bits together like he would make suggestions and then you know it's it was a combined effort that that book like oh my god we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to take my wedding rings off when we're doing this re-wedding thomas and just be wearing my engagement ring hey like this why are you only engaged i'm, I'm engaged to my fiance my fiance and then our little toddler is gonna have my wedding rings and he's gonna run up the aisle and be like mama and then i'm gonna put them back on again how thick is that why are we doing this because <laughs> it's fun and I want to have fun! I have just gotten myself ready for the day. I am wearing some very lovely undies from this brand called Dora Larson. Colourful, conscious, curated, their Instagram says. But, um, you know, like back before I had my son, I was a woman who delighted in new lingerie. Like, I'd get so excited to try on a new cute two-piece set and um treating myself like that really did help in terms of like positive self-talk and you know respecting my body and, and um fighting against body dysmorphic thoughts feeling sexual like a sex sexual person <laughs> and might i say oh my god did cute sets go out the window with birth and uh 
caring for a small human, wanting comfort, needing comfort really, not having a second of brain space to really think about how do I look today, how do I feel about myself today, like all that stuff was just, I didn't have space for it in my head. And something this series has prompted me to think about and, and something that I've realised is that as much as I might be looking more like myself again, you know, nice little sets, finding the odd day in the week where I can put on face and makeup, wearing clothing that's not pajamas or active wear, as much as I rediscover old parts of who I was, I'm not that person anymore and my identity has completely changed, like I am a mama, I am a mother, that is the core of my identity now and I know some people will watch this and think that's incredibly tragic and sad and to those people I say it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done with my life, the most fulfilling thing, it's brought me the most love, the most joy but also the most change and you know I've had to really let go in motherhood of of who I was, of, of the, all the things that like made me comfortable and I am, I am still trying to hang on to, to certain things because you know I liked who I was and it scares me to just completely shed that and let that go and I don't think I have to necessarily, I think I can hang on to certain elements of who I was but at the end of the day now like what matters most to me is my son is he happy? Is he clean? Is he fed? Is he, you know, is he learning? And a lot of my, like, you know, desires for, for nice things <laughs> are kind of a bit down lower. Um, but they do exist, like, it's like a parallel. Um, it's not like it's one or the other. And I think a lot of parents I know that I've spoke to online, anyway, kind of, they do see it as that. Like, it's, it's the old me or the new me. And the new me can't really have any overlap with the old me because this huge big thing has changed and all that's dead and buried. Um, but what if though? What if I get to be a mama who absolutely adores her child and a woman who loves nice lingerie and gets to look after herself and have time for herself and has hobbies outside of child related things. Women are multifaceted, humans are are multifaceted and I've realised time is the only thing really that stands in the way for a lot of us. Like, you know, for me, I, I, I wish there were more hours in the day um, that I could kind of every day keep all balls in motion but, you know, I, I have some days where it's, you know, survival mode messy bun, big massive baggy knickers with holes in them and my husband and I are like passing ships in the night and the two of us are just trying really really hard to be par good parents because we're parents now. We still have those moments of spark and passion when our son is with his grandparents and we're alone for a bit but like that's not all the time now, we're parents and there are other days when the child is not my sole responsibility you know and, and I, I can come up here and have you know a nice steaming hot shower and listen to an audiobook, podcast, doll myself up the tiniest bit and just be with myself, be with this body of mine and be me and get in, get in touch with with myself again there's so much pressure to like have your baby bounce back and you know act like nothing has changed nothing has happened that you are the same person as before that you look the same you know but you're now holding a baby or a child and and that's all that's put out there online that's all that people really see the kind of glowy filtered view of motherhood and and the reality of it is it's messy as fuck and you do change so much in it you get lost in it and and you find yourself again in it you do you do I'm 15 months in now my son is nearly 15 months old and this will be like his second Christmas and I definitely feel more myself now but what feel what is what is myself is different if that's what I'm trying to say reset this project reset means it can mean to that like it means to start over again but it also means to adjust the official definition is to set again or anew and 
I think definitely like going into this, I probably thought, oh sure, I'll spend a few months, you know, focused on self-care and, you know, on reconnecting with my husband and getting back to the old me. And I, 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 I it's not been like that. I think I have almost been born again and um, yeah, I've brought parts of the old me into this new new life but i honestly think i've learned so much about myself in these few months and and through these videos and this series has not turned out as i imagined it would but i think that's a good thing and i think i i think i need to leave this series here in in 2021 you may not have had a baby but the pandemic you know a lot of us are coming out on the other side of the pandemic very different to how we were when we went in you know i went into the pandemic very terrified very hesitant to get you know very angry at authorities i wouldn't i wouldn't even necessarily say distrusting of them but just just terrified shocked like all of us you know went through probably a full spectrum of emotions and beliefs and like you know what you'd think was going on it would be flip-flopping in the same day and the one thing i just i really didn't want to bring the pandemic energy into this year like i wanted to just try and just live with it just live with you know we have this new world now this new normal i need to move forward i need to keep pursuing my creative projects keep improving keep growing keep learning keep having fun and keep finding things to smile about and, and i think i've done that and so yeah i i think i was planning on like continuing on this series but just know that the reset is, is it's not like you start and you finish. I think this is just an, a lifelong journey where you kind of fall down with a health dip or something bad happens and you get the fuck back up. I'm going into 2022 with thicker, growing, growing back hair, hydrated skin, feeling healthy, feeling grateful, loving the people in my life and with a book launch coming up. I'm so proud of myself for all that I did with a baby in a pandemic. And I hope that this series inspired you in even the tiniest way. If it did, please comment, please like this video and please stick around for next year when I've, you know, I've moved into my house and I'm gonna make sure that my content is as good as it can be, um, much more consistent. Um, and I want you guys to feel anchored on my channel. I, I'm so glad that you've been here with me learning and growing and um i'll uh, i'm gonna leave you guys here um hopefully i'll have another video up before christmas if i don't have a lovely christmas kiss and cuddle everyone near and dear to you in your life and um yeah farewell my loves